Hello, my fellow Ripplers. This is Chris Miles, your cash flow expert and anti-financial advisor. Hey guys, welcome out for a wonderful show. A show that's for you and about you. Those of you that work so hard for your money, you're ready for your money to start working harder for you now. You want that freedom, that cash flow, that prosperity today, not a bazillion years from now, but right now. So you can have that life that you love because you work because you want to, not because you have to. Being with those you love, doing whatever the heck you want. But see, guys, you want more than just your own comfort and convenience because as ripplers, you want to create a ripple effect in the lives of others because as you prosper, you can help others do the same. You can show up stronger, more confident, and relaxed, and you have the resources and the means to bless more lives. And guys, that's what I'm here to do. And guys, this is not just about showing you how to make more money, right? That giving you money does not solve your problems, but showing you how to prosper, how to understand those principles of prosperity that is a ripple effect I'm trying to create through you guys. And I appreciate you guys being a part of this movement, creating a ripple effect in your lives, which allows me to create a ripple effect through you too. And we just keep making this world a better place. As a reminder, check out our website, moneyripples.com. There's blogs on there. It's got videos. And we've got even uh, you know, our Beyond Rice and Beans ebook you can download for free. So check that out. So today, guys, I want to just express some gratitude and, and teach a very a very important concept with everything going on. One, I appreciate those of you who have been reaching out to me, especially because just almost every time you guys reach out, it's someone I can actually help. And this is exactly why I kind of came out of retirement again, right? This is why I never fully retire because you guys give me meaning. You guys give me this ability to keep doing more. And yeah, I love doing the infinite banking stuff with you guys too. Like that's amazing. And I love that I can bring something unique and powerful there that even other infinite bankers aren't doing. But on top of that, when I get some of you guys that say, hey, I think we're a perfect fit for you right now to help take our money or do something with the assets we have and make something of it to create passive income. And man, like you guys that have been reaching out almost every time it's like, yeah, I can serve you and make a massive impact in your life and, and it's, it's awesome. So I appreciate you guys that have been reaching out. As a reminder, if you think you're in that position where you say, hey, I've got at least 100,000 sitting around or maybe I got a ton of equity in this house or, or, or maybe even you got a lot of debts and you say, I've got some resource here, but I'm not sure how to make this all work, shoot me an email, chris at moneyripples.com and let's check it out, see if there's something you can do in your situation. But today I wanna get into the concept of dollar cost averaging, right? And this is going to be heralded as dollar cost averaging is going to be already been heralded as the hero for investing, right? I heard this months ago, and I've even brought it up again in another another podcast episode that we did about you know how dollar cost averaging is a lie. And I want to go into that and even just emphasize it a little bit deeper, because the whole concept of dollar cost averaging is they they try to play off the whole buy low sell high, which by the way that is a true principle. Like you do want to buy low sell high, or I shouldn't even say that's true principle. That's more of a strategy than a principle, but overall it does work, right? You do want to buy something at low. And of course, if you're going to sell it, sell it at a higher price, right? But here's the thing is that when they talk about dollar cost averaging, they say, Hey, the market's going down, buy more. Here's the flaw. When the market's going up, what are they telling you? Buy more. Notice it's never, Hey, you know what? Right now the market's going up. Don't buy anything, right? That's the fundamental problem is that this is a sales tactic. This sales tactic has been used for you to basically get into the largest Ponzi scheme in the world, which is also known as the stock market, right? And, uh, and why do I say it's a Ponzi scheme? Because people say, well, come on, there's assets. First off, you really don't have any assets. Yeah, you have shares of a company that already went public, that already made their money off of selling it off, right? Um, they keep their own shares that just ride off of your... Off, you know, basically they, they, have that, they can increase in value too based on investors and what they're doing. But essentially, you're kind of making more money because more people are throwing money into it, which is also what a Ponzi scheme does. <laughs> people throw money in, right? And you basically get paid from investors' money. That's a, a, one of the common traits of a Ponzi scheme is that you're not making money because the asset's paying you. You're making money because people are throwing money into it. Guess why the stocks go up? Not necessarily because the company is any more valuable, because people are throwing money in, right? Another problem is that, you know, do you really have an asset? The truth is no, 
I mean, even though you might say, hey, I got this piece of paper that says I have something, you really don't have squat. Uh, you really aren't a very, you're not a significant shareholder in the first place. You think your little bit of money is going to make a difference in that company? Not at all. You're just gambling with money. You are purely a gambler when you have your money in the stock market. And so I know that's the common thing. And I know it's a sacred cow for a lot of people. But the truth is the stock market is not the place to be. And dollar cost averaging is actually the very concept to also prove that. <laughs> Here's, let me show you. Now, those of you that are watching this video, you'll want to watch this, right? If you get concepts, you know, you can create images in your mind, this will work. But I have this sheet, and I showed this before in another video. This sheet is the sheet I showed to my clients back in my traditional financial advisor days. Now, this was a very useful sheet, especially in Y2K, which is when I came in, right? Because the market was tanking, especially 2002. That was the year, about the year I came in, and that was the biggest losing market. And so we would show people, listen, when the market's going down, you want to buy more. You don't want to stop buying and jump out of the stocks. You want to buy more of this. And so I show this example. So this one, the first, there's three different graphs. The first one shows you putting in $200 a month. This shows you just what kind of demographic I was dealing with back in those days. You're just throwing in $200 a month and uh, the stock price started at $10, right? Or the mutual fund price started at $10 a share. So at $10 a share, you bought 20 shares because 200 divided by 10, 20 shares, right? Um, the goal of this concept is to try to buy as many shares as possible and then the, hopefully the price goes up, right? Now the next month you buy it at $12 a share. Basically over the course of six months, it goes from 10 to $20 and you bought it $2 increments per share along the way. In the end, so with $200 a month, it went from 10 to 12 to 14 to 16 to 18 to 20 over the six months, you bought 85 shares. Now 85 times $20 a share, because it jumped, it doubled in price in six months, puts you at 1,700 bucks. Now here's the concept that I would show people. I'd say, look, now, if the market was at $10 a share, but then it dropped to eight the next month, and you're still putting in 200 bucks a month, then down to five, and then it set at five for another month, then went back up to eight, and then it only went back up to 10, only broke even. Now, after doing all that, you end up buying 170 shares. You bought double the amount of shares of the one that was going up in price. Why? Because you bought it at a discount, right? Here's the thing, the, the value was 1,700 bucks. Same exact value as the one that doubled in price. So even though the price stayed the same overall, you still made as much money as if it had doubled, right? In an upward trending market. The last one, the last one of course is the most impressive one I'd show people. And this was a, a huge seller during Y2K. Uh, the last one shows that it started at $10 a share, right? You bought $200 a month or $200 a month. So you put $200 at $10 a share, you bought 20 shares. The next month went down to eight. So now you're buying about 24 shares or 25 shares. Then it went down to $5. You're like, woohoo, I just bought now 40 shares. And then it went down to $1 for two months in a row. So it basically went down 90%. So you're buying at $1 a share. Um, that means you bought 200 shares one month, 200 shares again the next month. And then it only recovered up to $4, which means you still bought 50 shares. So in total, now you, instead of 85 or 170 shares, you bought 535 shares. Now times that by four bucks, you have 2,140, which is over 400 bucks more than the other two examples. And again, like it's easier to see this on the video if you're visual. The point is you bought at a discount, right? That's the thing. Here's the problem. Here is the big problem. Because again, if you're gonna teach a concept, make sure it works. Make sure that you're going to actually question what you're teaching here. Because what happens to the stock market overall? Which of these three graphs is the stock market over time? Generally speaking, right? Now it goes up and down all over the place. Generally speaking, the market goes up over time. This is like graph number one. Sure, it doubles in price, but the truth is over time, you're really just buying on an up market, meaning it gets more and more expensive all the time. You are not buying low. You just keep buying higher and higher. So your money actually buys less and less over time. In the other example, yeah, sure goes down and comes up. Now this might look like the last four months, right? If you go from February to now June, now these four months, it's done almost exactly this. Like the market's now come back up to where it was in about late February. 
as of right now, right? So people are getting really excited. They said, see, Chris, dollar cost averaging works. I was able to buy it when it got down cheap, when it went down like 30%, you know, when the market went down 30, almost 35% at the low, right? So I bought on sale. So look what happened. It would have been just like the market went up, but no, I've actually bought something for cheap. That's true. But here's the thing, guys. The, the more likely scenario, at least if you're looking the next few years, is actually looking closer to graph number three where the market keeps going down. Sure, short term, we see this little bounce going up, but guys, just the other day, they announced they announced that the that we're in a recession. Like it's official, we are in a recession. Why did the market go right back up to where it was? Doesn't that seem fishy to you? Why is it that you know we've had massive unemployment, right? We we have so fe think of February. February we just heard about coronavirus being out there, like it was starting to show up a little bit in New York State. But for the most part, it was, there was a Chinese, remember people were calling it the Chinese virus, right? And then people were saying, that's rude. You shouldn't call it Chinese. Like it's, it's not a Chinese virus. Okay, whatever. It was, a, it was a virus that we heard first heard about starting in China, right? So in February, just four months ago, this was hardly even a topic. It was, it was just like news of something out there. The market was about where it is now. It was even a little bit higher than it is now barely higher right but now we're in a place where there's massive unemployment people aren't quite going back to work like we had hoped now people are starting to go back to work but there's a lot of people not or worse yet what they didn't put an emphasis on reporting is that wages didn't go up over the last year wages actually went down 0.1 percent so even though people haven't been hired back they're not getting hired back making more money and over time you need that to happen or we're in big trouble because if wages go down, that's a big issue. So if we're not seeing wages go up, and in fact, if even they start to go down, sure, you might have a job. If you're not making enough to make ends meet, you start cutting back everything, and that affects all the other companies too, and they all make less money as well. Again, whatever stops money from exchanging is what's happening. Now, the government's trying to artificially boost it up by throwing money at you and at companies and everything else to keep people afloat, which... Cool. I see that short term making a difference. You know, that they're trying to, it, just like a plane that's crashing, they're trying to slow the crash down by saying, hey, let's put a little parachute on this thing as it's coming to the ground. You know, maybe it won't crash as hard, but it doesn't stop the fact that for the most part, these are still monies that have to be paid back that are going to cut into future profits. So all this is happening. We're actually in an official recession, but still the markets bounce right back up. This should be concerning to you. Now, this could be an opportunity because this could be saying, hey, at least I made some of these losses back if you have money in the market, right? At least you could say there's a silver lining. But I can tell you this, is that it makes zero sense for the market to stay up or even go a lot higher than where it is now. Now, some people will say if, if Trump gets reelected, maybe it will. But again, we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know at what point will investors say, cool, we just made a bunch of money by, they actually did do uh, this very thing, right? They did this dollar cost averaging, but in a different way. They looked at it from a very short-term perspective, getting out short-term. Do you think that there are people out there, both in, you know, successful investors, right? And then, and now when I talk about investors, there are people that actually buy into companies that are real investors. You're just gambling in the markets. You're not really an investor. You're just a gambler. But there are very experienced gamblers out there. I know because I, I taught people to, to gamble in the markets. I actually taught people how to trade stocks and options at one point for several years. Here's the thing is that I would be also be telling people like if, if profits are coming back up, watching for any sign to sell out right away to take out profits. Like if you're doing a swing trade, you know, when they talk about swing trading short term, holding on to a stock for anywhere from a few days, anywhere to weeks, right? Not much more than a few months. You're going to start taking your money out and, and cashing it out now and then waiting for things to shift and figure out where the trend is actually going in the market. There's a lot of uncertainty going on. You don't want to be trading on, on news and things like that. And a lot of news is affecting what's going on in the markets. So guys, there's a lot of reason to sell out of the market right now. In fact, everything that's talking about buying seems a little bit, doesn't it seem a little bit fake to you? Doesn't it seem, a, seem like it goes against our, our, our actual common sense? 
And yes, so there'll be people out there say, Chris, but here's the thing. People are trading off emotion what they foresee in the future. They see us making this V-shaped recovery. They see this and that. Sure, they do. But guess what? Even the feds don't even have that optimistic of a view. <laughs> Maybe the news and the hype they're trying to use is a great way to make some profits and then take their profits and run while you're left holding the bag as you watch your money disappear into oblivion. Do you think that's possible? Here's the real point. Either way, you have no clue what's going on. You are just gambling with your money when you keep it in the market. You might try to hold on to it, but here's human nature. Human nature says even when the market starts going down, just like you probably did a few months ago, when the market started going down in March, did you bail out a good chunk of you? Some of you did. I know because I talked to some of you, but a good chunk of you didn't. Some of you guys just wrote it. You wrote it down 35% thinking, well, it's got to pop back up because that was ridiculous. Yeah, you're right. That dropped way too fast, right? It's un unlikely for something to drop that fast and not pop back up a little bit. They even call it a dead cat bounce. You know, when there's no reason, it's just because it falls too fast. Just like if it goes up too fast, it has to pop back down. There has to be balance. Same thing. You probably held on through that whole wild ride, didn't you? If you did, you're going to do it again. I guarantee it. You're going to end up saying, well, it might come back up again. You never know. Like, oof, that came down pretty fast, but you know, it might come back up. And that's what every person has said in every recession. They said it in Y2K and they watched their retirement money disappear. And then they had to wait for their money to come back. And then when it came back, um, almost came back, then we hit the next recession, the great recession, right? Right when they're like, okay, my money's almost there. Oh, I got hit again. And it wasn't until about 2015, 2016 that you finally said, great, the money I had in 2000, if you didn't contribute anything to it, right? You just let it ride. Finally, by about 2016, you said, I got my money back. That's like over 15 years, guys, that you're waiting for your money to come back. That is ridiculous, okay? Now, again, I'm not saying you go and sell off everything. Uh, again, I'm not going to give you those kind of recommendations on the air or even off the air necessarily. I just want you to be fully aware of what human nature does, which is human nature does not want to sell when things go down. Human nature wants to hold on and hope that money comes back because you'll always say the lie. You'll say the lie to yourself saying, well, I don't lose money until I sell. That's true. And yet that's the very deception that keeps people losing money. Secondly, you think you're buying cheap when you buy it, when it goes down. The truth is you don't because the best thing you could have done in this example here, right? Is not keep buying when it goes down. If you actually knew it was going, you knew what you're doing in the market, you would wait till it hit $1 a share. Heck, maybe it was even $3 a share. Let's just use that example. Let's just say that you saved up your money for three, four months, right? That $200 a month you did not put in the market, but then you said, I have 800 bucks now over four months. I'm gonna buy it $1 a share. That's 800 shares. Even if you didn't do anything else and you just did that. And then maybe you bought the next month. You're like, whoo, all right, it's awesome. So you bought another 200 shares. Now you're at 1,000. And then you pocketed the 200 bucks. You just left it there. You said, oh, it's coming back up. Maybe I'll buy, but maybe I won't. Well, let's just say you did buy. Let's just say you did, $4. You bought 50 more shares. That's 1,050 shares times four bucks. You're now at $4,200. More than double the little bounce if you just followed it. Or yeah, really just, yeah, more than, yep, double. A double of what you would have done if you just kept buying all the way down. Guys, buy low, sell high. That means you don't buy when it's tanking. You wait till it, after it's tanked and everybody says the market's bad. That's when maybe if you're looking to buy in the market, that could be the time. Understand that opportunity happens when usually people say, don't buy this. This is a bad idea. That's usually the best time to buy. When everybody's saying, hey, stay in the market. It's the best time to be in it. That's usually the time not to be in it. <laughs> you know. Now, there's, there's definitely voices saying, hey, we don't know what's going on. Here's why the market's going up. Because again, they already factored in everything that's going on right now. They expected this. That's the point, guys, based on expectations. That means whenever there's weird, crazy news that comes out, there's no, almost no time to react. That's when they're going to buy or sell. So if there's news that's unexpected, right, then people buy and the market goes up. When there's news unexpected that's bad, like not just good news unexpected, but bad news unexpected, then it goes down. We don't know what the heck is going to happen. This is the thing. You are gambling. You have no clue. This is why every financial advisor, and I was taught to say this as a traditional financial advisor, was do not buy anything 
right? Like don't, don't try to time the market. Don't do any of that stuff. Just keep putting money in the market blindly. Just keep doing it on a regular basis because you don't have the time, the training, or the temperament to understand it. So just keep plugging money in. Trust us as advisors. Trust us that we'll guide you along the way. Guys, this is how you lose money. This is why middle America is still broke. If you want to be like everybody else and say, man, I haven't really made as much as I thought I would in the market, and you probably have already been saying this for years, you want to keep doing that? What's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Guys, I hope you understand that dollar cost averaging, it only has a half truth. And those are the biggest lies. The truth is buy low, sell high. The lie is that you should be buying all the time. And remember, the market goes up over time anyways. Why would we keep buying what's more expensive? Wouldn't we want to wait so like you're deep into a recession before you buy anything? Save up your money and then buy. If you're going to do that philosophy, if you're to trust actually what advisors have been saying, buy at the bottom or buy near the bottom when everybody's been selling out like crazy. Then maybe, after, and that usually takes, by the way, at least a year or two before it hits bottom. That's usually the case. It usually takes at least a few years before you hit bottom. Just like I said a few months ago, don't think we've hit bottom. Don't think that little dip of 35% was bottom. That was just a test. And the test is, did you win or fail? Did you hang on rationalizing? If you did, you failed. You failed the test because you will do it again. And it'll be more costly the second time around. So guys, I hope this is enlightening for you. I hope this opens your eyes and gets you to at least ponder and think about what you're actually doing because there are many, many better ways to be able to create money and create better passive income than just gambling in something that really no one knows what's going to happen. No one knows how it's going to happen, what it's going to look like, and when it's going to be. If we had a crystal ball, awesome. But guess what, guys? This is not back to the future. You did not have Marty McFly's little book that he bought in the future to be able to gamble and make money. You didn't have that, guys. You have day-to-day. -day. Are you going to gamble your wealth even to the point of possibly losing it all? Or are you going to actually go for something that's certain that's been proven for years and years? That is my challenge to you guys. Again, if you have questions, shoot me an email, chris at moneyripples.com. I hope you make it a wonderful and prosperous week. And we'll see you later.